The Dallas Cowboys have traded for quarterback Trey Lance. Who wins this trade? Well, except for the controversial part of it, <laughs> um, which is the distraction and the, oh, he's going to take over for Dak. And what about Dak's contract? Because mm -hmm. all that stuff, are, that's sidebar stuff. And it doesn't right. matter if it's not true. Because none of that stuff is true. He's not taking over for Dak Prescott. No. It's not leverage against Dak Prescott's contract. He's not even taking over Cooper Rush. Mm -hmm. He's a prospect. So if the Cowboys could ignore the outside noise, yeah. then this can work out fine. Giving up a fourth round pick for a prospect. Think of it this way. Um, would you draft Trey Lance in the fourth round yeah. every, oh. every couple of years? I mean, as the number three pick in the 2021 draft, see, right. it seems like a steal for the Cowboys. Right. So in that sense, it, it's a fail-safe move, yeah. as long as the Cowboys can deal with the publicity issues and the, um, the distraction issues. I would do what they've done in the past with some guys in somewhat similar circumstances. I would make sure that Trey Lance isn't holding a press conference every day in front of his locker. Right. Uh, that, 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 that doesn't help anybody, and, and hopefully the Cowboys will kind of put a Lies lid on that, that and make it really clear. As Jerry Jones did on Saturday night right. before the Raiders game, saying, I'm not counting on him for anything. I'm not <laughs> counting him on the help this year. I'm not counting on him to contribute. I'm not, this This is a wild dart throw um, and an attempt to, to just swing as hard as you can and see if you get a quarterback. It has been mentioned that the Cowboys were interested in Jalen Hurts in right. his draft. And that's true, same draft, as a second round pick. Yeah. So when people are saying, and because now there's some retrofitting here, people say, well, the Cowboys have always <laughs> loved Trey Lance. Well, they had a second round grade on him. Right. So they didn't love him enough like the 49ers did to give three number one picks to go yeah. get that slot. Um, a, a trade, by the way, that will eventually come back, you would think, to haunt the 49ers. That chips away at your cupboard, whereas giving a fourth round pick, that does not impact the Cowboys' future draft co cupboard. So in the Cowboys, Trey Lance, San Francisco trade, is there a loser of this trade? Well, you can't get through this with and, and ignore that San Francisco put its entire future in yeah. his hands and that he was so bad or such a bad fit or such a something yeah he wasn't even competitive with sam darnold yeah let alone be a starter when they named sam darnold the backup quarterback it was like okay the writing is on the wall here and the gap between those two is huge now maybe if he doesn't have injuries last year trey lance because he got dinged up early on maybe it's a smoother ride for him yeah but by the time Brock Purdy goes from being a nobody to being better than him, mm -hmm. Sam Darnold goes from being a washout to being better than him, a fair criticism of the whole Trey Lance package and certainly of the 49ers, maybe the Cowboys will see. Mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan is a quarterback guru. Yeah. And he couldn't get anything out of him. We'll see what Mike McCarthy can do. I will throw this negative at you as well. Yeah. Mike McCarthy's got his hands full. They're installing a new offense. He's got to get Dak Prescott to not throw 15 interceptions. Texas Coast offense. They, no Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, um, all the all the changes and all the news, and now Mike McCarthy's got one more job, which is to train Trey Lance. Yeah, that that makes it very much a back burner thing for me, and I assume and hope the Cowboys think the same. Yeah. Okay, one more thing about Trey Lance, the number three overall pick in twenty twenty one. He's already being labeled as quote unquote a bust. Do you think that's fair? Uh, it's it's harsh. Um, but when that level of expectation is put on you and you accomplish nothing, yeah, uh, I guess it's fair. There, there's plenty of guys, um, to be very fair about it, who just don't fit where they're at. And, you know, change of scenery and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, he hasn't had much chance to really develop on the field at the NFL level. Correct. I also think, you know, the transformation from being at North Dakota State, with all due respect to their fine program, yeah. this ain't that. Uh, and, and so maybe it's not just an adjustment to the system or the coaches. Or maybe it's an adjustment to a, a brand new life, a brand new everything when you go from North Dakota to San Francisco and now to Dallas. Yep. And now we are on to the regular season. So is there a week one matchup that you're really looking forward to circled on your calendar? Well, there, there's a couple games, obviously, that I think everybody in the NFL is looking forward to. Yeah. Chris Collinsworth the other day said what we've said many times for many years. If if the league could put the Cowboys on national TV in prime time <laughs> every week. Yeah, they would. They would. And, and Collinsworth said that about NBC. And that's a that, that's an admission of a sort. Yeah. Um, if, the, if the other teams uh, would go along with it, it would, it would make it would bring more <laughs> revenue into the NFL and obviously into the Cowboys coffers as well. So Cowboys at Giants is a yeah. marquee game. Um, that is the biggest 
um, in, in terms of population fan base in America right. at New York against the biggest popular against the biggest fan base. Period. Not to mention two teams, of course, that were in the playoffs last year. Right. Uh, I think you have to throw Bills and Jets oh, in this too. Absolutely, New York on September 11th. Um, with again the, the September 11th weekend and um, the New York fan base thing. Yeah. Now the Jets fan base hasn't had as much to cheer about right. as the Giants certainly did last year, um, but that is a fan base waiting to happen yeah. with the Jets and Aaron Rodgers is there now too. Um, they they are viewed as being the rejuvenated Jets, but in fairness to the Bills. The Bills have won three straight AFC East yeah. titles. They are they have been on the lip of the cup mm -hmm. uh, time and time and time again. Something the Jets haven't been for years. So there's your NFC <laughs> top matchup, I think, Cowboys yeah. Giants, and your AFC top matchup, Bills versus Jets. In the Dallas Cowboys preseason finale, quarterback Dak Prescott did not play, but he was the offensive play caller. So what grade would you give Dak well, as I've, offensive play caller? I've seen some. First of all, let me grade the critics. Yeah. There are some people that are <laughs> so anti-Dak or so yeah. anti-McCarthy. They're actually making an issue out of this. Um, it, to question Mike McCarthy and his decision-making when what he's clearly trying to do, in addition to having, doing something fun, Yeah. this is Dak Prescott owning the offense, which right. he's talked about a lot. He's immersing himself so deeply in the offense that he's now calling the plays. And to the critics who would say, yeah, but you're costing somebody. This has been happening for this entire preseason where a different head coach will say, I'm going to have this defensive assistant call plays in this yeah. game instead of me. It, everybody's doing it. But since the Cowboys did it with Dak, right. it's treated as if it's some sort of cartoon. And guess what? He wasn't half bad. It, it worked out just fine yeah. on the scoreboard. And of course, <laughs> him him and Will Greer's uh, ear yeah. and Dak in his own bag, th th this will help the Cowboys because Dak Prescott will have a greater grasp of what he's doing. A different perspective, too. Um, um, okay, this is what Mike McCarthy's doing on the sideline. I know because I've now done it. Exactly right. Um, th this is this is like you know teaching your kid how to drive. Yeah. And then at some point, you know, you, you, <laughs> you're, you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. And at the next point, you move to the passenger seat, and eventually, you, in the take, off, you take, <laughs> off the, take off the training wheels. Right. To let Dak Prescott do this is a good, smart, enriching experience for everybody involved. And there's no player on the offense. They, they, they just put up a bundle of points in the first half of yeah. this game. There's nobody on this third team offense who's complaining right. because Dak Prescott's calling plays and costing them a job. Dak Prescott so far is helping guys win jobs as the play caller. Yeah, true that. Okay, last but not least, do you have any preseason week three huge takeaways from around the league? Yeah, I, I think the um, the argument, and it's never going to go away, um, do, do we, should we protect guys in bubble wrap yeah. or do they need to get their experience? And Mike Tomlin, the Steelers head coach, said something that I think Bill Parcells once said too. You know, before you box, you got to spar. Mm -hmm. And I get the analogy, except as I'll point out, with all due respect to, to, to the coaches who've decided to play their starters, right. unlike the Cowboys and McCarthy, the Bills played starters. Again, even in the last game, Josh Allen, Diggs, yeah. all playing. Um, sparring is against your friend with headgear on. <laughs> this, has, this has nothing to do with sparring. Right. These are real live people trying to <laughs> knock your block off. Additionally, as I've said many times about sitting out the preseason, because we've got to knock off the rust, and i got to feel what it's like to get hit, and i yeah. got to feel the speed of the game. So let's. So, so Dak Prescott should play three snaps in a preseason game, yeah. which is the kind of thing that Mahomes and Josh Allen have done. Uh, Aaron Rodgers can't he just get the speed of the game and the sparring to boxing in the first three plays of the regular season, mm -hmm. thus avoiding injury. So I'm not saying there's an automatically wrong idea here, yeah. but there's certainly not an automatically right one that says <laughs> you play Josh Allen. That is not automatically right. That you play Dak Prescott. That's not automatically right. It could be a little different with Sam Howell yeah. in Washington. Yeah. That's a little different. It's a little different with Desmond Ritter in Atlanta. It's certainly different with C.J. Stroud. He right. needs all the work he can get. <laughs> but, but Dak Prescott does not need three snaps so he can get loose for the regular <laughs> season. It's ridiculous to me. Good point, Fish.